So let's look at the following example that will deal with Gauss's law. Suppose that we have a very thin spherical shell of radius r naught. This shell contains a uniform and continuous distribution of net electric charge given by positive q. Determine the electric field at points outside this thin spherical shell and at points inside this thin spherical shell. So let's begin by examining the following diagram of our thin spherical shell. So the thin spherical shell is shown by the following brown region and the radius of our sphere is given by r naught. Now we know that charge is distributed continuously and uniformly around the outer edge of our surface and the charge is given by a positive sign. So that basically implies that all the electric fields will begin on the outer surface of our shell and will extend outward as shown by the following orange arrows. And the angle between this vector and the surface is given by 90 degrees. Now this will become important in just a moment so let's begin with part A. Determine the electric field at points outside this thin spherical shell. So we essentially want to apply Gauss's law which states that the net electric flux is equal to the closed integral of the dot product EDA and this is equal to the ratio of the total charge enclosed in our chosen region to our epsilon naught where epsilon naught is simply the permittivity of free space it's a constant. Now, in order to actually use Gauss's law, we have to choose a certain region, a certain region that contains the points that we are considering. So we want to essentially choose a region such that contains the points outside of the thin spherical shell. So one such region that we can choose is the region shown by the following red, red dashed line. And let's call this region region A. Now region A is a sphere and the reason we want to choose a sphere is because spheres are symmetrical. They are symmetry and that will help us simplify our problem in just a, as we'll see in just a moment. So we choose a sphere such that the radius of the sphere A given by R is greater than the radius of our thin spherical shell given by R naught. So we choose a sphere with a radius R such that the radius R is greater than the radius R naught. Now, by the fact that our sphere is symmetrical, this sphere A is symmetrical, we see that the magnitude of the electric field of the electric field at any point on this spherical shell given by A will be exactly the same. The magnitude will be equal. Now, our direction is in the same direction as shown by these arrows, and that means the angle between the surface and our electric field vector is given by 90 degrees. Now because our dA is essentially always perpendicular with respect to our surface that means these two vectors point in the same exact direction. So the angle between these two vectors is zero and that will become important in just a moment. So, once again, by the symmetry of the sphere, we know that points on the surface of our sphere A will have an equal magnitude of electric field. Since the electric field and our dA are, are both perpendicular to the surface, we see that the angle between them is zero. So now we are ready to apply Gauss's law, which states the following. So our electric or net electric flux is equal to the closed integral of the dot product EDA. Now by definition of dot product, we know that dot product is equal to the product of the magnitude E multiplied by the magnitude dA multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them given by theta. Now we know the theta is zero zero and cosine of zero is one. So this becomes one. Now by the symmetry of our situation, the magnitude of the electric 
could feel that any point on this red dashed line is constant. So that means our E is a constant and we can bring that outside of our integral. And we get that our net electric flux is equal to the electric field multiplied by the closed integral dA. Now this we can evaluate and we simply get our area. So this is equal to the product of E multiplied by area and by this relationship this is equal to the Q divided by our epsilon naught where Q is the entire charge enclosed inside this red region. Now let's continue. So we have our net electric flux is equal to E electric field multiplied by the surface area of this outer region and we know the surface area of a sphere is simply 4 pi multiplied by R squared where R is the radius of this outer region A. So we simply once again take this and, and equate it to Q divided by epsilon naught. So we have this is equal to this. And now we can solve for our electric field. Remember we're calculating the electric field at any point outside of our thin spherical shell. So we see that the electric field is equal to Q, the total charge enclosed or found on this thin spherical shell, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R squared. Now notice this is the same equation for the electric field as a result of a static point charge. So that basically means we can conclude the following statement. We see that the electric field outside a uniformly charged thin shell is the same as if all that charge found on the shell was concentrated at the center, was assumed to be a point charge. So this is the same equation for Coulomb's law which is used for point charges that are static. So whenever we are asked to calculate the electric field at points outside of such a thin spherical shell with uniform and continuous net charge, we see that we simply use the following equation. Now let's move on to part B. We want to calculate the electric field at points inside our thin spherical shell. So once again we have to use our Gauss's law. So we follow the same exact procedure except now we choose a region that encloses points found inside our shell. So let's suppose we choose the following uh, red region given by the following red sphere. And now our radius is given to be R which is less than R naught. So this is our new A. So we follow the same exact procedure. We see by symmetry that our net electric flux is equal to the integral, the closed integral dot product EDA. Now our E is a constant, the cosine of the angle 0 is 1, we get the following result, we integrate, we get this, which is the same result as here, and we equate that to this. Now what exactly is the charge, what is the Q found inside this closed region? Well the charge is 0 because all the charge is found on this thin shell and that means because the charge inside this region is zero that implies that our flux, our net electric flux is equal to zero and the electric field at any point inside our thin spherical shell is also assumed to be zero. So once again let's overview what we just learned. So whenever we have a thin spherical shell in which all that charge is distributed evenly and continuously within that shell, we see that if we want to find our electric field at points outside such shell, we can simply think of our charge as being concentrated at the middle as a point charge that is assumed to be stationary and we apply the following equation that is a result of Coulomb's law. Now on the other hand if we examine points inside our thin spherical shell the electric field at any point inside is always zero because there is no electric charge inside that region.